Hi guys, Miss Muhammad here, 6th grade, ELA, Cypress Point University Elementary School here in Monroe, Louisiana. So today we're going to go on with our lesson in Hatchet. We are in lesson number 10. So just to kind of back up to where we, uh, where we left off, we found, or we learned that Brian has been making mostly good decisions. We compared what he's doing uh, in the text to a nonfiction text, which was What Would Peter Do by Peter Cumberfelt, who is a survival expert. So we really learned that comparing those two texts, that he was doing exactly what he needed to do. And he was actually doing it organically, okay? So that means he was figuring it out, thinking about the things that he had done before as, a, you know, hanging out with his friends, watching television shows. So he's pretty much on track with where he needs to be. So today we are going to read chapter six and seven. We're going to annotate on our sticky notes and we're gonna summarize using our reading journal handout sheet. Now you have all of those materials with you. We're good to go. So of course, you're going to need your book Hatchet. Now I have two different copies. I like to use this one because I can actually write on it. But if your class has this one, then of course you're going to need your sticky notes and you can place little sticky notes into areas where you want to remember certain parts of the text. Okay. You're going to need your reading hand, uh, journal handout sheet because you know at the very end we always have one of those one or two questions that we have to go back in the text and think about what we've We've jotted down so that we can better answer the questions. And of course, your sticky notes. So we're going to read chapter six and seven. Of course, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm gonna give you something to do. Um, and we're going to stop at a couple of sections. Um, when you read it, you're gonna stop at, they were awful berries. That's where you're going to stop. So while I'm reading a couple of excerpts today, I want you to think about a couple of questions. What challenges does Brian face? And how does Brian respond to these challenges? So those are the two things I want you to think about while I'm doing a couple of readings. So let's kind of pick up where we, we left off. So when we left off, uh, Brian had pulled himself up. He, he'd pulled himself up to uh, the bank. He was kind to, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. He had to think about a few things. He started to feel a little panicky. He was trying not to panic. And then he started thinking about his teacher. Do you remember what his teacher's name was? Mr. Perpich, that's right. He thought about Mr. Perpich and what he wanted him to do. And there's a couple of things that he told him, he reminded him to do while he was, um, you know, in class. Can you remember one of those things? Right, he said, get motivated, stay on top of things. And so we talked about that and we said, hey, that must mean it, you have to stay on top of what's going on. And so Brian, he pulled all the things out of his pocket. He had, he had a couple of uh, coins. He had a billfold with some uh, money in it. And he said, well, oh, and he had some nail clippers and he was like, okay, so what am I gonna do with this? And then it hit him. He had the, what did he have that his mom gave him? Right, the hatchet. That's the name of the book. So he had the hatchet, he took it out, he placed it in front of him and he said, okay, so now what am I going to do? So that's what we're gonna pick up today. So I'm gonna read a couple of excerpts, we're gonna take a couple of notes, and then we're gonna close out with our reading journal handout, okay? So starting with chapter, chapter six, Chapter six, two years before he and Terry had been fooling around down near the park where the city seemed to end for a time and the trees grew thick and came down to the small river that went through the park. It was thick there and seemed kind of wild and they had been joking and making things up and they pretended that they were lost in the woods and talked in the afternoon about what they would do of course, they figured they'd have all sorts of goodies like 
a gun, a knife, and fishing gear and matches so they could hunt and fish and have fire. I wish you were here, Terry, he thought, with a gun and a knife and some matches. In the park, they had decided the best shelter was a lean-to. And Brian set out now to make one up. I want to stop right there. When I first read this, I said, now what is a lean-to? I, I had never heard that term before. Have you ever heard of that? Well, so what I did was I went back and I looked it up, what, exactly what it was. And so this is what I found. All right, a lean-to is an uncomplicated shelter to build. And if it is good if you have a tarp or a mylar blanket. Like a mylar blanket, is, it looks like um, silver. It looks a, like a silver um, thin blanket, but it actually will keep you very warm. So he was thinking about that when he was uh, thinking about his time with uh, Terry. So I'll continue. So maybe cover it with, a, with grass or leaves or sticks, he thought. And he started to go down to the, to the lake again where there were some willows. He could cut down for branches, but it, stuck, it, but it struck him that he ought to find a good place for the lean-to. And so he decided to look around first. He wanted to stay near the lake because he thought the plane, even deep in the water, might show up to somebody flying over, and he didn't want to diminish any chance he might have of being found. His eyes fell upon the stone ridge to his left, and he thought at first he should build his shelter against the stone. But before, before that, he decided to check out the far side of the ridge, and that was where he got lucky. Using the sun, and the fact that it rose in the east and set in the west, he decided that the far side was the northern side of the ridge. At one time in the far past, it had been scooped by something, probably glacier, and this scooping had left a kind of sideways bowl back, back in under a ridge. It wasn't very deep, not a cave, but it was smooth and made a perfect roof and he could almost stand in under the ledge. He had, to hold his hand, he had to hold his head slightly tipped forward at the front to keep it from hitting the, the, hitting the top. Some of the rock that had been scooped had to also been pulverized by the glacier action, turned into sand and some made a small sand beach that went down to the edge of the water in front and to the right of the overhang. This is a great example of how nature works. So if we look at this and we think about, you know, our science courses of how certain areas are created, this is great, great stuff. So let's go on. Now, no, he thought. Um, he had good luck in the landing. But this was good luck as well. Luck he needed. All he had to do was wall off part of the bowl and leave an opening as a doorway. And he would have a perfect shelter, much stronger than a lean-to and dry because the overhang made a watertight roof. He crawled back in under the ledge and sat. The sand was cool here in the shade and the coolness felt wonderful to his face, which was already starting to blister and get especially painful on his forehead with the blisters on top of the swelling. So we're gonna stop there. So as he goes on, he realizes at some point, you know, I've got this, I've got my shelter built, but now the other need. We said there were things that we all need. We need shelter. Of course, we need clothing. The most important that we might think is food. So as we go on, we start the, he starts thinking about how am I going to get something to eat? If you remember in our last chapter, 
we talked about the food. I mean, the idea that he was just, his stomach was roaring. We talked about that, remember? So now he's going to think about, or he's thinking about, or using his prior knowledge, how am I going to get something to eat? Okay, so further on in chapter six, he says, he had to stop this. His mouth was full of saliva and his stomach was twisting and growling. What was there to eat? What had he read or seen that told him about food in the wilderness? Hadn't, it, hadn't there been something? Ah, a show, yes. A show on television about Air Force pilots and some kind of course they took. A survival course, that's it. All right, he had the, he had the show coming into his thoughts now. He, he was thinking about it. The pilots had to live in the desert. They put them in, in the desert down in Arizona or someplace like that, and they had to live for a week. They had to find food and water for a whole week. Think about that. The desert, you have to find food, okay. So he goes on to talk about what, he, what one of the pilots did. She actually found some uh, beans and she said, okay, so what am I gonna do with beans? Well now, do you think Brian found beans in the wilderness? I don't think so. But if you read further, you'll find out that he found some berries, okay? So let's read a little bit fur further. Wait, there was one thing. One of the pilots, a woman, had found some kind of beans on a bush and she had used them with her lizard, she, she had used them with her lizard meat, of course she found some lizards, to make a little stew in a thin tin, in a tin can she had found. Bean lizard stew. Mmm. There weren't any beans here, but there must be berries. There had to be berry bushes around. Sure, the woods, full of berry bushes. That's what everybody always said. Well, he'd actually never heard anybody say it, but he felt that it had to be true. So if we go a little further, he finds the berry bushes, he gathers up, uh, gathers up a lot of them, and he begins to eat them. And he eats them, and he, they, they were really not very sweet at all. So he kind of just went, okay, so I have to eat these. I have to, you know, find some type of nourishment. Okay, so if we go on into chapter seven, so he finds the berries and he eats them up and you'll find that something happens after he eats so many berries. They weren't actually something that he should have been eating. So it made him really, 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 really really sick. And this sickness, it just made him toss and turn for all night. And so we look as we go into chapter seven, and this is the last little spot we're going to read. And I'm going to let, let you read the rest. It says, mother, he wakes up. He screamed it and he could not be sure if the scream awakened him or if the pain in his stomach was what wake, woke him up. His whole abdomen was torn with great rolling jolts of pain, pain that doubled him in the darkness. The, sh the little shelter of the little shelter put him over and face down in the sand to moan again and again. Ah, mother, mother. Okay, so as you can see, the, this was a lot. He really was going through a whole lot. So now I'm gonna stop right there. And we're going to take a minute to just kind of remember some of the things we should have jotted down, okay? So we should have jotted down some information about the first part of chapter six. So the first part I wrote was Brian must learn to build a shelter. Now, we remember that we don't necessarily have to quote everything. You know, my post-it note is really big. So I used uh, big letters, but George, you're not going to have that much room. So it's a good idea to summarize. And so those summaries are really gonna be helpful because when you have to go back in our culminating writing task, you'll know exactly where to find your information. Now remember, 
we were supposed to be looking for actions, words, and thoughts, okay? So what I did, I wrote down the chapter and I wrote down just a quick summary of what happened in chapter six. So it says he remembers building with one of his friends, Terry, and uses the memory to help him. So that's a, just a quick blurb to let me remember where I found this. Here's another, chapter six. Brian recognizes his good fortune in the landing, that's the part of the plane, part, landing part, and finding a good spot to lean into or to lean to. Remember what the lean to is, it is that uncomplicated shelter, okay? And so as we read further, as we go through it, it says, Brian needs to find food. So he finds some food. What does he find? He finds berries. But how did he remember about the berries? He actually thought about a television show. Now, a lot of times when we do things, we have that prior knowledge. So that's, that's good to know. So he remembers a, a survival show he saw and how they looked in the environment, how they looked in the environment. So he sets out to find, what did he find? He found berries. All right. Very good. So now we're ready to go on into our reading journal handout. And when you are looking in your reading journal handout, you are going to answer some of the questions. Now, remember those guiding questions we had at the very beginning? What were his challenges? How did he, uh, uh, how did he learn how to, to deal with those challenges? Okay, so here's one of the questions. Is, what is the most important challenge Brian has faced in chapter six and seven. Okay, think about what he went through. When you finish the chapter, this is gonna be an easy question. The next question is, how does Brian respond to his challenge? And why is this challenge important? Okay, so I wish you uh, all the luck in finding the answers because it's there. Remember to look at your annotations. You've got this, this is easy, and I know that you're going to do well. So, so far what we've done in this lesson, you learned that Brian is beginning to respond to his challenges in a positive way. And we also practice using annotations to keep track of how Brian's challenges uh, change, how he changes, and to help you summarize the text. I hope that you do really well, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.